Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. French President Emmanuel Macron said on Friday that he backed Europe's centralised approach to buying COVID-19 vaccines and that it would have been wrong to take a nation-by-nation -nation stance. He told a news conference following a virtual meeting of the France-German Defence Council and Security Council that if France and Germany were competing for vaccines, it would be counterproductive on an economic level and on a sanitary level. His comments come as the European Commission has been under fierce criticism from European Union member states over delays in the EU's COVID-19 vaccine rollout, which has badly lagged behind countries like Britain, a former EU member, and the United States. And the monde. I totally support the European approach we have put in place, because we should not vaccinate one country or another. What would we say today if France and Germany were competing for vaccines to buy and to produce? It would be a messy scene and it would be counterproductive on an economic level and on a sanitary level above all, because we will only be done with this pandemic as Europeans when we vaccinate a sufficient part of our population. Although Macron has publicly defended the decision to entrust the European Union Commission with negotiating vaccine contracts, a diplomatic source recently told Reuters that he had been driven mad by the slowness and lack of imagination of EU institutions on vaccines. What we have to prepare now are additional acquisitions and production on our soil of vaccines that will be needed against the variants, with the experience of what we have managed to do well and with the experience of the acceleration of history the past weeks that we have had to go through and that put the EU in a difficult position. But it's not like me to tell you that we should have done things on a national level, in a way, and that everything was done wrong. It's not true and I want to pay tribute to President von der Leyen, her services and the European commissioners in charge of that matter. The French president also very strongly condemned Moscow's behaviour towards Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny, from his poisoning to his arrest and to the expulsion of foreign diplomats saying he stood in solidarity with the three countries that had had their diplomats expelled. Earlier on Friday, Russia had announced the expulsion of diplomats from Sweden, Germany and Poland, accusing them of taking part in illegal protests last month against Navalny's jailing. A year after his death from COVID-19, residents in the Chinese city of Wuhan commemorated Li Wenliang, the whistleblower doctor who first sounded the alarm about the outbreak before it received official recognition. Before he died, Wen Liang was persecuted by the Chinese authorities, who accused him of spreading false rumours. The 34-year-old's death led to an outpouring of public mourning and rare expressions of anger online. When President Xi Jinping honoured the heroes of the People's War against Covid in September, there was no mention of Li's contribution. While people on the streets around Li's hospital say life in the city has mostly returned to its usual rhythm, they still revere Li for his actions. First of all, I think the public strongly acknowledges him and personally, I think he should receive more official honours rather than he is treated as what he did is already in the past. I feel kind of sad with the current situation. Of course, we made some mistakes in the early stages when fighting against the virus, but it was handled pretty well since. Many praise the doctor for revealing information on the new virus despite knowing that the authorities would come after him. Everyone knows that he's a whistleblower. I think he deserves this title. He told the public about the virus. He really took the courage to do it. He must have considered the impact would be huge, but he still raised the alarm to the public. I think he is a brave man who really thought about the people. The origins of the virus have become highly politicized, and some Chinese diplomats and state media have thrown support behind theories that the virus potentially originated in another country. Around 100 activists rallied in downtown Beirut today to protest at the killing of Lokman Slim, one of the country's most prominent Hezbollah critics. The protesters demand the authorities to start a transparent investigation. Slim, a Shiite publisher in his late 50s, was found dead from gunshot wounds in his car on Thursday. It was the first such killing of a high-profile activist in many years. On Saturday morning, his wife, Monica Borgman, tweeted for the first time since his death, sharing a two-word banner with a black background reading, Zero Fear, in Arabic. The same slogan appeared on a banner at the gathering at which several angry activists blamed Hezbollah for the killing. Lockman died because he named people and he spoke up. We will not kill him again with our silence. We came to name people. This is the least we can do. Hezbollah has condemned Thursday's killing, which Lebanese officials, including the president, have called an assassination. Slim was a vocal critic of what he described as Iran backs Hezbollah's intimidation tactics and attempts to monopolize Lebanese politics. What is asked for today is that if Hezbollah really is innocent of this crime or refuses, 
to claim responsibility for it, and condemns it, then we have to help the security forces and the Lebanese judicial authorities, especially since Lockman Slim was killed in their security zone. Slim ran a research centre, made documentaries with his wife, and led efforts to build an archive on Lebanon's 1975 to 1990 sectorian civil war. His sister has suggested that this is why Slim was murdered. United Nations-sponsored talks have produced a new interim government for Libya, aimed at resolving a decade of chaos, division and violence by holding national elections later this year. Mohamed al-Menfi, a former diplomat from Benghazi, will head a three-man presidency council, while Abdul Hamid Debay Debay, from the western city of Misrata, will serve as prime minister. Libya has been engulfed in chaos since a NATO-backed intervention ended Muammar Gaddafi's four-decade rule in 2011 and has been split since 2014 between warring administrations in the West and East backed by foreign powers. All candidates for the new government promised to honour the plans to hold presidential and parliamentary elections on the 21st of December and not to run for office then. The United Nations publicly displayed their signed pledges. Today we have very good news in our search for peace. I welcome the selection by members of the Libyan Political Dialogue Forum of a unified temporary executive authority. And I call on all members of the dialogue and the Libyan and international stakeholders to respect the results of the vote. I congratulate the three new members of the Presidential Council and the Prime Minister-designate on their selection, but also I wish them every success in their mandate to lead the country for the remainder of the preparatory phase leading up to the national elections on the 24th of December 2021. Turkey, which backed the Tripoli government and the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, which have supported the Tripoli government's rival, General Haftar, publicly welcomed the new government, making the international community hopeful that the civil war could be over for good. It is essential that all foreign fighters uh, and mercenaries move first to Tripoli and Benghazi and then leave the country, according to the new schedule that was defined. And it is essential that everybody cooperates with the new authorities to make uh, peace uh, happen uh, in Libya. The fact the ceasefire has been holding, even with a huge military presence on both sides and very heavy equipment on both sides, is a signal of hope, and I believe it's a duty of everybody to do everything possible to make that hope transformed into a reality. Analysts describe the new government team as surprise winners of a leadership contest against three other groups of candidates presented to the 75 Libyan participants picked by the United Nations to take part in political talks. That's the news. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow. Yeah.